Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. We come expecting the Lord to do great things tonight. Let's stand and invite the Lord's presence into the service tonight. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come before your presence again. For the opportunity to come before your throne again with all the other saints of God. We come believing and expecting you to move among our hearts and move among our lives. We desire to hear your voice speak into our hearts and speak into our lives, Lord. Father, Lord, we invite you to meet every need and every need and every situation tonight. Those that need healing, let your healing power to flow, Lord. Father, Lord, bless every part of the service tonight. Father, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you and we love you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing and worship the Lord tonight. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of Sacrifices of joy. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifice.
that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do. It's all about you. Help me remember, dear Lord, as I fight the good fight. You are there by my side. You will never depart. Yes, Lord, it's worth it all. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do. It's all about you. Help me remember, dear Lord, to keep my eyes on the prize. Soon the trumpet will sound and I'll be heaven bound. Yes, Lord, it's worth it all because it's all about you. It's all about you. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do, it's all about you. Help me remember, dear Lord, as I fight the good fight. You are there by my side, you will never depart. Yes, Lord, it's worth it all. It's all about you. It's all about you. And it's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do, it's all about you. Help me remember, dear Lord, to keep my eyes on the prize. Soon the trumpet will sound and I'll be heaven bound. Yes, Lord, it's worth it all because it's all about you. It's all about you. And it's, it's all, all about you. It's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do. It's all about you. It's all about you. Oh, it's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do, it's all about you. It's all about Him. Everything that we do, every prayer, every thought that we have, everywhere we go, it's all about Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. It's all about Him. Worthy is 
clap of praise for that tonight. Amen. Truly he is holy. Worthy of all the praise and all the honor. We're going to give him all of that tonight. Amen. Help us out in this choir. Let's have a good turnout for choir tonight. say now you can call yourself a sinful soul in this song if you want to but I'm going to call it a happy soul so you forgive me for changing a the word there but gee I'd be I'd be shaming the blood of Jesus to say my soul is still sinful amen brother brother Brendan told us this morning we didn't have to live every day in sin we can live every day without sin amen by the power of God not with the power of Roger not with the power of brother Thomas but with the power of God, we can be victorious.
Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for the love of God tonight? Amen. Some of you will go home tonight and say, we sung two brand new choir songs today. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was staying close to the words, I'll tell you that. Amen. <laughs> Some of them, I got them all right here. Some of them, I better have the words close. I enjoyed both of them. Amen. Hallelujah. They sent me that text this afternoon, and uh, we were getting ready for church, and and um, Titus, I think it was, asked, what are we singing for choir? I said, all I can tell you is page 138. I don't even know if we know it. And I said, is there a hymn note at this house? They said, yes. Go find him. He comes down the hallway. We know this one. We know this one. I like it. Thank you, Brother Roger, for stretching us. And, um, but I still kept a close eye on that screen back there. Amen. Just to make sure I didn't haul off on the wrong words at the wrong time. Amen. Isn't it just fun being a Christian? Amen. What a joy it is to have you tonight. Trust that you've had a good day in the Lord. And, um, and uh, don't forget about all the events this week. Uh, some of us will be gone Monday and Tuesday for ministers' meetings and church Wednesday, Wednesday night meals and classes and clubs, all of that stuff Wednesday. Um, and then pra praise team Tuesday night, uh, fall festival Friday night, work day Saturday morning. If some of you young boys don't have a ride, if you'll call me, I'll be happy to come pick you up. Amen. And uh, some of you ladies can help Sister Wendy in the main building Saturday morning, 9 o'clock. And, uh, and if we work too, too far past the lunch hour, we'll uh, uh, try to feed you some pizza or something to keep you going. I want to get as much as we can get done, done Saturday. Youth event, youth event Saturday night, and then a full day of stuff on Sunday. And uh, I, I've, I realize we've booked ourselves very close between uh, youth service and the fall festival and homecoming. But let me talk about homecoming uh, just for a moment, and we're trying to make sure you can keep all these events separate in your brain. I like we're having two in our brain, but we're excited. Brother Ronnie Jarman will be back with us for homecoming this year, and uh, he'll be uh, in, in the state of Florida the week before preaching revival in LaBelle, and then coming up and being with us Saturday night and Sunday morning. And uh, that Saturday night will be a full service. Uh, we're needing you to be here, and our youth choir will be singing, our praise team will be singing, Brother Jarman will be preaching. And after that Saturday night service, we're going to have a time of refreshments out back. And, um, and not to confuse you with fall festival food. Fall festival food is hot dogs and nachos and desserts and cotton candy and popcorn. That's this week. Homecoming week, we're talking like sandwiches and those little smokies and some meatballs, okay? And uh, those kind of things for our time of refreshment after that Saturday night service. And then we'll come back Sunday morning. And uh, we will uh, have a uh, 10.30 start time on Sunday morning. No Sunday school that Sunday morning. We will start worship at 10.30 uh, because there's uh, just a lot we like to get done in our homecoming services. So that will be that Sunday morning. And uh, then no Sunday evening service because we've moved it to Saturday night. We would have already had it by the time that we get to the homecoming day. So uh, just try to keep all that in your, in your schedule and, and worked out. If you have questions, call us. We'll do our best to straighten ourselves out and keep you straight along the way. Uh, it has required us to stay close to a calendar, but we're excited about what God's doing. And right after we get out of homecoming, then we're going to turn uh, the throttle wide open for Thanksgiving and holiday and Christmas and live nativity and Christmas and all that stuff. But let's get through homecoming first, and uh, let's take time to be thankful unto God for 61 years of ministry. That's a long time. And God has been faithful all of those years. Um, I've not been here all of them. I've been here, I guess we've been here about 25% of them. Can you believe that? Wow, 25%. I'm getting old, amen. Uh, 61 years, 25% would be about 15 or so years. And, and we've been connected with you here since 2002. So that's 14 years. And uh, so we spent 25% of, of their life with them. Wow, that's a long time. That baffles me tonight. Uh, but I'm thankful for what God is doing, and we're going to celebrate that weekend and want you to, to be with us. All right, ushers, get ready to wait upon us. Let's give a good offering tonight. How many of you love Jesus? Say amen. 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 Add an extra zero to that check you're writing tonight. Amen. And uh, let's give a good offering. Um, we have been blessed with candy for our fall festival, but how many of you know you can never have too much candy? Amen. Keep bringing it. Somebody told me today, I've got four back. Bring it. Bring it all. And because um, whatever, uh, if I go to that office on Thursday morning and I don't think we have enough candy, I'm going to go to Walmart or Sam's and I'm buying some more. 
And so if you're going to have candy, get it all in by Wednesday night, Thursday morning, over to the office, and we can see what we've got. We want to do what? We want to follow Pastor Renfro's instructions, load all these kids up on candy, and then send them all home. Amen? And uh, unless your name is Odom, you can't have any candy if your last name's Odom. Uh, but everybody else can have triple and quadruple the candy. And uh, we're going to have a good time on Friday night. And we are expecting a large crowd. And uh, it's out on social media. Been up on our sign for several weeks. And we're just expecting a time. Going to give away some gift cards. How many of you like free money? Amen. Going to give away four $25 gift cards on Friday night. You have to be present to win. And I've already picked those up. I mean, we're, we're ready to go. So uh, make sure you're here on, on, on uh, Friday night for a good time of fellowship. Let's pray tonight. Ask God to bless our offering. Father, truly, it is a joy to be called a part of the family of God. Thank you for this local assembly of believers. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Bless this offering, God, as we give. Lord, we're not given to give ourselves a name. We're not given, God, to fill our coffers. But, God, we're given that your work may continue here in West Orange County. Lord, bless that effort tonight, and we'll forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. 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 God bless you as you give tonight. Hallelujah. Come on up, youth choir. Now let us have a little talk with you.
Hallelujah. I've come too far to quit now. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all did a good job tonight. Amen. They do a good job every time they sing. Amen. Amen. When y'all see the youth pastor, you tell him uh, he was slacking today. <laughs> Amen. They, uh, were, they, they may be home time we get out of church. And uh, they had their, every year they have a family reunion, I think is what they call it, um, in Georgia with uh, Sister Holly's family. And that's where they've been since late, late Thursday night. So uh, remember them. If they're not home yet, they are traveling. I spoke to them briefly. Uh, via text this afternoon, so uh, we, we do miss them and uh, be praying for them. They, 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 like the rest of us, have a very busy week this week, and then he gets to preach Sunday morning, amen? So uh, he can stay up Saturday night and talk to the Lord about it, amen? I'm going to crawl into bed and go to sleep, hallelujah. Stand with me for the reading of God's Word, Second Peter chapter number 3. I got about half of this out last Sunday night, and man, I'm chomping the bit to get the rest of it out, so... If you'll listen fast, I'll preach fast. Amen. 2 Peter chapter number 3, the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of His coming? For a little while tonight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to briefly recap last week. And I only got about halfway through it. I'm going to try to preach the rest of it. Using this title, Don't Go Back When He Is Coming. And Jesus is coming. Can I hear an amen for that tonight? Would you uh, raise your voices in your hands tonight and ask God to touch us? Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you for the Spirit of God that's real. Thank you for the privilege we have to be in your house on a Sunday night. Lord, I love my church family. Lord, I love my Jesus. And I love what you're doing in our hearts and in our lives. And, and I pray, God, for a, a moment in time tonight that you will, uh, uh, Lord, just rid us of every distraction. Rid us, God, of every uh, 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 understanding. Understanding, Lord, of things that become tomorrow if we live. And Lord, I just allow our mind to be arrested by the Holy Ghost. And Lord, that we might hear what you're saying from heaven to us here on earth. Lord, and just let us have a time of season of prayer around this altar. Lord, and don't let us quit. Don't let us back up. Don't let us give in. But let us move forward even so much more, God, as we know we're nearing the rapture of the church. And we'll forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. And amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord tonight. I started uh, reading last week and to week and this week uh, out of our text in 2 Peter chapter number 3. But last week I spent most of it catching you up from chapter number 2. And, and the writer of chapter 2, the writer of chapter 3 uh, was trying to remind us that there would be scoffers and false teachers uh, that would make themselves known at that time and in today in which we live. And last week I gave you nine characteristics of uh, of false teachers and I'm just going to uh, run through them quickly because what I want to get to is chapter number three uh, those nine characteristics they walk after the flesh uh, and live unclean lives because of it uh, number two uh, they despise government or authority number three uh, they are presumptuous meaning they're very bold and, and they speak out against leadership and authority number four they are self willed they only live to please themselves uh, number five uh, they are, are brute beast which means they do not reason properly they speak evil things and they don't understand and, and, and we deal with that in our life um, number six to nine to they have adulterous eyes uh, and, and we see that running rampant in our life and in our society and I say God just protect us and let us be aware of it. Number seven they are covetousness people it, 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 they, uh, they love money and they have a desire for things uh, more than the things of Christ number eight they are wells without water and the word well here is an interesting word um, it's a word used for a flowing spring and Peter is saying um, that, that they are springs but they have no water they're dried 
up. And we know uh, in our society there are, are those even that we know in our lives and in our families that are dried up. They're without water. And number nine, they were clouds without water. They, they, uh, if you've ever been around, you've seen the clouds built in the sky, but yet uh, no rain never comes. And, and uh, these were some harsh words from the Apostle Peter, but they were necessary because there were many false teachers around at that time just as there is today. And maybe even worse today because we're living in the time of the end. And Jesus said that the devil's big guns for the last days would be deception. Reading from Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. Take no heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name and shall deceive many. I am afraid, church, that we have come to a time and a place in our life where we just refuse to know what's right and we refuse to, to, to find it in the Word of God. I am troubled in my heart even in the last couple of days as I have heard of individuals and people that are close to me and that I, I consider as like family to me giving up on their walk with the Lord giving up on their time with God and just saying I'm just going to live any old way that I want to so I remind us tonight that we need to be careful that we are not deceived in the time in which we live Seems to me that as we go through life, things that are churchy, we need to be careful about. Why you say that, Pastor? Because I don't want to go through the motions of church and miss heaven. I don't want to go through the motions of living a life that I'm thinking is pleasing to God to get to heaven and to get to the, 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 the gates. And he said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. I, I, I don't want to live a life that's deceived. We find that today, according to Matthew, many, many shall be deceived. And Peter makes a very profound statement here and I think it would be good for us to look at as well. Again, in the second chapter of Second Peter, for if after, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, and the latter end is worse than the beginning. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Now, if you study the scripture, there is an error, I believe, in maybe what a commentator would say. One commentator said it like this. And these men professed to be saved, but they had never really been redeemed at all. But if you read the scripture, that is not what the scripture says. You see how easy it is for the devil to manipulate and play on words? You see how easy it is for the very elect to be deceived? It does not say that these men had never really been redeemed at all. Look at the verse again. But there, uh, look at verse text, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. And you'll have to find it in your Bible. I'll read it to you. I don't know if they have it. But there were false prophets also among you, among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. Those last three words that bought them, they had been bought by the blood of Jesus. They had been redeemed. And if we go to verse number 15, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray. You cannot forsake something that you never had. You cannot for forsake, you cannot go astray from something that you never possessed. Can I warn us tonight that we need to be careful that we're not led astray and that we're not deceived. For verse 20 says, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, and the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. They had escaped the pollutions of the world because they had known the Lord. But they went back to the pollutions and they were entangled again. In other words, they had backslid. Now a lot of folks don't like you to use that word. Once saved, always saved is not biblically correct. 
And just because I came to an altar of prayer and gave my heart to Jesus uh, does not mean that I, I cannot fall back into the entanglement of the world. They went back to the pollutions. Uh, they were entangled again uh, and they backslid. Now Peter gives us uh, two examples of this. Number one, they are like dogs that vomit uh, and then go back later and lick it up. Gruesome, but it paints a good picture. Why would man want to do that? Why after we have been delivered from the entanglement of sin, why would we want to go back to that again? Another example that Peter gives us, uh, they're like a pig that was washed um, but later returned to the mire. So we realize according to study and according to Scripture that these uh, were saved, they had been redeemed, uh, they were living for Christ, uh, but they went back on the Lord and returned to the world uh, and were entangled uh, in the world uh, and were overcome. Reading from 1 John chapter 2, Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Folks, it is possible to backslide. And it is possible to lose out with God. Young people, old people, middle-aged people, listen to this preacher tonight. You do not want to get entangled with the things of this world. You do not want to go back and lick up the vomit from yesterday. You do not want to go back and wallow in the mud from yesterday. Those that have been set free by the blood of the Lamb are free and free indeed. But it's our job to make sure that we don't go back to the world. It's our job to make sure we do not backslide it's our job to make sure we don't go back and dabble in sin and it's our job to make sure we don't give up on God so, pastor is it really all that important yes the good news is tonight you don't have to give up on God the good news is tonight he's never given up on you and for that I'm thankful tonight but I don't want to give up on him Peter says in chapter 3 our text that I read last week and finally getting to this week. Listen to what it says. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both, which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of His coming? Peter is telling us and goes on to tell us that there are three things that will keep us from going back on God. Now I'm going to probably get a little uh, plowing tonight. I'm okay with that. Everybody needs to be plowed every now and then. I've already been plowed through my spirit. God's already dealt with me and and I'm preaching tonight heavy because I, I am troubled at, at, as I alluded to this morning and tonight, folks that I know that are close to me, that, that it seems the enemy has just wrapped his hands around again and snatched them back out into a life that is not godly, a life that is not right. I say, God, how does it happen to people that are raised in church? How does it happen to people that have Christian parents? I'll go a step further. How does it happen to kids and grandkids that have preachers for mamas and daddies? I can tell you how it happens because the devil wants your soul. It's our job to make sure we don't go back on God. Number one, we need to remember. Getting these people to remember seemed to be the primary reason, wrote, uh, primary reason that Peter wrote this epistle. He said, wherefore, in, in, in chapter 1 verse 12, wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. And then in our text tonight, he began by saying, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you uh, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Did you know tonight that it's possible to have a pure mind but a bad memory? It is possible to have a pure mind but a bad memory. 
Peter was afraid that these folks uh, had a bad memory. And I wonder if we too uh, have a bad memory. Uh, why did Peter think that of them? Uh, because they were not stirred up. Uh, notice in both incidents Peter said uh, that it seems he was reminding them uh, of these things. Uh, and it was to stir them up. Can I tell you we live in a day where we need to be stirred up one more time? We live in a day where when we walk through uh, the communities in which we live and the places in which we shop uh, and the jobs in which we work, uh, we need to have something about us uh, that stirs us up on the inside uh, because sin is rampant. Uh, the devil is working overtime. Uh, and if we're not careful, we as a church will sit back and be rocked to sleep uh, and some of us risk being deceived. Notice. Notice. Somehow or another, it seems that they had become complacent. They had become lukewarm in their walk with the Lord. Can I tell you, that may be, that may be the number one complaint of pastors across this land today, especially in our land of America. People are complacent. People are lukewarm. No one really seems to really be stirred up anymore about the things of God or, or the coming of the Lord. And Peter is telling us it's time to get stirred up because Jesus is about to come. Church, can I stir you up tonight? Can I do something through a presentation of the Word of God and by the anointing of the Holy Ghost to get something to check us in our spirit and ask yourself, are you even excited that Jesus is coming? Why? We live in a time when complacency and lukewarmness has taken over. This week, as I have behind the scenes dealt with this attack of the enemy, and it's nothing to do with me or my family, it could be, but just because of God's grace and mercy, this week it's not. But as I have dealt with this in my spirit and I have pondered it in my mind, I said, God, how is it that this happens to people that know? But I can tell you how it happens because we get tired and we get complacent and we get lukewarm and we don't want to go pray and we don't want to go to midweek service and we don't want to read our Bible. Church, it's time for us to get stirred up because Jesus is about to come. If we've ever needed to remember, we need to remember now. If we've ever needed to get on fire, we need to get on fire now. If we've ever prayed, we need to pray now. If we've ever gotten close to God, we need to get close to God now. We need to remember what God has said. Number two. Number two. What did He want them to remember? Pastor, you've screamed and hollered about me remembering. What is it, preacher, you want me to remember? Peter tells us it's the words of the prophet. I believe here what he is meaning is the, that the prophets foretold of the coming of Jesus, the, 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 uh, the rapture of the church. He came the first time like he said he would. He's went away and they were expecting. Do you remember the, the early church? Do you remember the anticipation? Do you remember? Uh, and can you imagine what it would be like to have been there when Jesus ascended into heaven? And, and, uh, and we sing that old song, this same Jesus, uh, the, the same way he ascended. He'll, can, can, could you imagine the anticipation it was uh, to be there? And Jesus was uh, there. He ascended to heaven. And he's coming back and getting up the next day and say, today could be the day that Jesus comes back. Oh, it wasn't that day, but get up the next morning and they say, Oh, today could be the day that Jesus comes. And He didn't come that day, but they get up the third morning. But somewhere along the way, over these 2,000 or so years, we've lost the expectancy that Jesus could come. Seems we're planning to stay here. I uh, was challenged this week. Sit Monday in an all-day retreat from 8 o'clock to... Five o'clock with four other pastors. One of them is retired. Men that are old enough to be my father. That I, I, I respect and have love for. And, and uh, they enjoy being around us younger guys. And I enjoy being around them older guys. Because they've got some stories they can tell. And I thought, dear God, if I can learn 
a little bit about what they went through and ain't got to go through it like they did. God help me, amen. They've got some stories, man. They've got some stories. One preacher, one preacher, he didn't tell it this time. He's told it before. The way you knew he was leaving his church is he would get up on that service that Sunday morning, that Sunday night. He would preach a message called, called um, uh, based on that scripture, Moses, thy servant is dead. And so if you ever hear me get up and preach a message on Moses, thy servant is dead, you might want to see if there's a U-Haul in the driveway. He's done. He said, I've done it two or three times. I'm thinking, oh, I learned that kind of I thought, that's crazy stuff. But I love being with them. They challenge me. And they tell me they like being around me because I'm a little younger than they are and I can bring some energy to the room is what they they tell me. Now, these guys got kids and grandkids my age, but they challenged me this week. They said, what happens if Jesus doesn't come tomorrow? What are you doing, Pastor, to make sure your family is is secure and your your retirement is there? Now, now they believe Jesus is coming. They challenged me. And I made a commitment to them. I said, before we meet in this setting again, and I said, I will make sure I have I, I will make sure that I take the necessary steps. To make sure I've done what I've encouraged some of you to do. And, and, uh, and I'm thankful for all that you have given me. And all that God has blessed us with. But there's another opportunity. And, and I, I need to go ahead and sign up for some things. He says, Pastor Carter said, I, I'm going to be a thorn in your flesh. Until you get it done. He says, now Jesus could come and we could be out of here tomorrow. But if Jesus doesn't, Terry, we got to be ready to take care of ourselves and our families. And, and I thought about that over this week. I even picked the phone up one time to, to make the phone call. I printed out the paper and I said, but I'm really not expecting to have to worry about retirement because I'm expecting Jesus to come. Now a good steward will take care of the responsibility. And I've committed to that man, I'll take care of that responsibility. But I said, God, don't let me get so wrapped up in planning to stay here forever that I don't anticipate the return of Jesus. And I'm afraid what's happening in our church world at large is we're trying to put all these programs and and, and procedures in place to help us be better people on this side of heaven. And we need to be the very best that we can be. But we also need to remember in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And it could happen tonight. Don't be deceived. I posted a few days ago a list of the two large parties that are running for president this election season. The third option was, come Lord Jesus. And I said, God, I want to have enough faith that whether I live to see November the 9th or not, Or the rapture takes place. That I don't get wrapped up in things that I can't fix. That I I surrendered my life back to the Lord. And I prepare to hear the words of the Lord. And I get up in a pulpit every week and preach to the best of my ability with God's help. The word of Lord, the word of the Lord, truth and and life and liberty. And I say, God, let us be so stirred up. Can I tell you, if some of us would get as stirred up about Jesus as I've seen some of your social media posts about Trump or Hillary or someone else, then we're liable to have revival right here at Ocoee. It's either old me or old my, one or the other. All of you are thinking, what have I posted in the last week? (laughs) Go back and look. Go back and look. Number three. He wanted them to remember the words of the prophets and the commands of the apostles. What were the commands of the apostles? Well, three of them. I'll give it to you real quickly. Paul tells us to make sure we are awake. Do you know you can be in Sunday school, church, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and you can still be asleep spiritually? Go through the motions. Let me give it to you, Romans 13, 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is the salvation nearer than when we believed. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe that before you get home tonight, that the trumpet could sound and the rapture could take place? I believe it. And I want to stir it up inside of you. Let me give you another one. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 6. Therefore let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. 
I can't preach both of those words tonight. But if you can get an elementary definition, what does it mean to watch? What does it mean to watch? It, it, it means to, to be on guard, to be on lookout, to, to be look. If I know a robber's coming to my house, uh, I'm going to watch for him and do my best to protect what God has given me. What does it mean to be sober? It means to be in our right mind, not to be, uh, not to be swayed or not to be under the influence of, of things that are not of God. I say, God, let us watch. Let us be sober. Let us be ready. Let us be awake. Let us not sleep because if we sleep, sleep and if we slumber we may miss when rapture takes place second one he gives us second one Peter tells us to make sure we're stirred up there is little indication that many folks that attend services on a weekly basis are stirred up what do you mean by that pastor I was talking to someone just this week about church attendance at large and and uh, let me brag on you and then let me preach to you, okay? Will you let me do that? Let me brag on you and tell you uh, that what we are experiencing at Okoe is not the norm. Can somebody say amen? amen? What do you mean? Well, you'll have 110 on Sunday morning and that's a wonderful number. And then you'll have 85 or 90 come back for a Sunday night message. You don't hear of those statistics. Let me tell you, let me tell you what I hear is happening. They'll have 100 on Sunday morning. And they'll do good to get 25 or 30 back on Sunday night. And then they say, we can't afford to keep the doors open. It would be cheaper for us to turn off the lights and not come back. I say, God, why is it we've gotten into this mess that we're in? I can tell you why we've gotten there. Because we come to services and, and, and we're not stirred up. And we're not committed to what's happening. And we don't remember that Jesus is coming. And we just go through the motions. So instead of going back for a Sunday night service where there's nothing to be offered anyhow, we sit at home and watch that TV or listen to that radio or watch Watch Netflix and there ain't nothing good on any of them to begin with either. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Holy Ghost. We must be stirred up. God, allow us to not to be stirred up. God, I don't want to go through motions. God, I don't want to go through a routine. And I'm thankful, God, for 80 and 90 folks that come back on a Sunday night. God, I'm thankful for a Wednesday night crowd, God, that sometimes is even more than Sunday nights. But God, don't let us go to sleep, but let us be stirred up by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Have your way, sweet Spirit of God in this place. God, let us be stirred up. Let us be stirred up. There is little indication that many in the church world today are stirred up. When you don't come to church, you don't give to the Lord. You don't give of tithes. You don't have a burden for the lost. You don't support mission works. You don't pray in the altar. Could it be that we're not stirred up? Say, so God, I don't want to go through just a routine. I hate a routine. I hate coming to church and it being the same old thing every single week. I say, God, would you, would you touch Okoe in a way that you can stir us up? Jesus is coming back for a church that's alive. 
John tells us to make sure that we're ready to go up in John, 1 John chapter 3. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And every man that hath this hope in Him purifieth himself even as He is pure. Stir it up! Young people, moms and dads, grandmas, stir it up! You get to that prayer closet. You ask God to stir you up. You get to that altar. And you ask God to stir you up. The only way we're going to get off this ground is if we are living a life that is pure and that is holy because Jesus is coming and He's only coming for those that are watching and those that are on fire and those that are pure and those that are holy and those that are stirred up. And I say, God, would you start right here in the orders of this church and would you one more time stir us up and God has spoken through his spirit message of tongues and interpretation this is not for another church this is for us we get complacent we get satisfied Look at all that God is doing and I'm not making light of what God has done. He has blessed this church and I'm thankful to be a part of it. But there's more, there's more, there's more and we've got to stir up that gift that's inside of us. When I come to that altar of God, I don't want to come with my head bowed and, and oh me, oh my, but no. I want to lift up holy hands to heaven and say thank you God for setting me free. Lord, give me somebody else that I can teach and that I can preach to, uh, and that I can give a message to. Why? Because I want to be stirred up. So tonight, we're going to pray. And I don't want to, now I lay me down to sleep to pray. I want you to lift those voices, and if you've not been stirred up in the last day or two, then I want you to hit this altar first tonight. And I want you to ask God to stir up with inside of you that gift that He has given you. Stir up inside of you uh, that anticipation that Jesus could come before you get home. Oh, I would love for Jesus to come before the election. I would love for Jesus to come before my daughter takes off to Nicaragua and my son takes off uh, to Nicaragua later this year. I would love for, for Jesus to come before some other things that I'm concerned about happens. Uh, but if He does come uh, and I'm not stirred up I risk not going up and I say God it would be bad for me to preach Jesus is coming and then go through a routine in my own life and miss the rapture and it would be bad if you missed it as well Sister Wendy come quickly be ready to play and sing turn her up I want to make sure people are very comfortable in calling out to God because God stopped by I asked him to have a divine visitation in this service tonight. In prayer this afternoon, I asked him, God, would you show up and would you let us know that you're with us? Would you let us know that you know we're here on a Sunday night? And he's done exactly what I've asked him to do. And now it's up to you to respond. I've done my very best. I can't get you to heaven. If I could, I'd program all of you to make it. And I'd send you on tonight to make sure you didn't back out. But I can't do it. But God can. Would you come? Young people use this platform. Adults use these altars. Would you come tonight? And if you want God to stir it up again, would you come and gather around these altars with me? And let's call upon the name of the Lord. Father, they're coming. God, and we're not coming out of habit. We're not coming out of routine. We're not coming out of obligation. But God, I want to believe in my heart that we are coming out of a genuine desire for you to stir up what's inside of us. Father, I pray tonight that you'll lead and guide and direct us. I pray tonight, God, that from the youngest to the oldest tonight, we'll ask you for a touch in our heart and a touch in our spirit, Lord. Lead us tonight, I pray, oh God. Lead us tonight, I pray. Let us be led by your spirit and by your power. Move across this place tonight, God. 
Come on, church. Let me hear you calling out to the Lord. Raise those voices. Turn up that volume. And let's call to the Lord tonight. Father, I need you to stir it up. Lord, let me remember thy words. Let me remember thy commandments. Let me remember what you have said to me and to my family. Lord, and I'm not going to sit by and watch the devil, Lord, destroy it. Lord, I'm not going to sit by and I don't want to be deceived. But Lord, I want to be on fire. And I want to be stirred up for you. Help us tonight, I pray, sweet Jesus. Help us tonight, I pray, sweet Jesus. Use us, God. Whatever happened to death to us part Doesn't all reflect the heart Parents' faces tell of worried minds While children search but can't seem to find It's time we take a closer look Got back to living by the holy book No compromise without getting slack you see we'll go forward if we won't go back we'll know we'll know the tree by the fruit we see serving God has no in between we're either cold or we are hot he said look
the part if it won't go back. We'll know the trees by the fruit we see. Serving God has no in between. We're either cold or we're hot. He said the Hallelujah. 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 Before we leave, can you go to that old course, somewhat old? I mentioned it earlier this week. Jesus, I'll never forget. It's going to either be an F or C. I don't know. And uh, I don't ever want to forget what God's done for me. I don't ever want to forget Him saving me, sanctifying me, delivering me, filling me with the Holy Ghost, setting my feet. I don't ever want to forget. I want to continually stir up that gift inside of me. Amen. Let me sing this a time or two, and then we'll go home, and you can do whatever you need to do. But let me get it out. If not, she's going to hear it all week. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out.
Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set my spirit free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. Well, he's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. He's taken all my sins away. Well, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set my spirit free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Well, now, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never Oh, let me sing it one more time tonight. Well, now, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. Hallelujah. Stand with me across this building. Don't forget this week. Remember what God's done for you. Amen. Go in the grace of the Lord. We'll see you back Wednesday night. If not before, you are dismissed. Hallelujah.